please note that this video contains spoilers. The Line Movie Thoughts. I'm just gonna skip right ahead to the ending for my first comments here. So, I can see two possible interpretations of the ending. And I will say, it's maybe like an 80-20 kind of thing. Like, I'm 80% sure that at the end of the movie, it turns out they were right. You know, Judgment Day is happening, you know, and there are demons in front of Karen that really look like aliens, but whatever. It's, all it is is a kind of yeah, design, you know. They're still pretty creepy and scary. And her opening her eyes and that kind of, you know, nervous grin she has is her, you know, like Mike said, you know, there is an afterlife. That's proof of that, you know. And she's just kind of relieved at that, at least, you know. The other 20%, I gotta say, maybe what happened was exactly the same thing that happened with a second look every other time someone saw something that apparently wasn't there in the movie. It wasn't there the second time. You know, when you... You know, when, when they actually stop and just... A second later, it's gone. You know, it was... Hysteria, maybe, or something. You know, we don't know exactly. Like I said in the review, a bunch of questions that it doesn't quite answer. I wasn't entirely clear on if just every single person that had died, you know, opened up and a demon or an alien, whatever, came out, or if it was just the believers, or maybe, you know, maybe it came out of Betty because she committed suicide, you know, and that was a sin. For a little while, I was wondering why they had to kill each other, but I guess, you know, it's the whole, you know, you can't kill yourself, that's a sin. So they had to give each other the pill. But yeah, you know, I, I do wonder what exactly, if just every single, you know, who, when did demons come out and when didn't they, or did they just always? I thought the isolation worked really well in kind of, you know, you're, it helps keep you uncertain if this really is happening all over the world, and if this really is, you know, Judgment Day, if it is all ending. And I think that was, excuse me, the right decision, excuse me, when I first pick up this, picked up this movie, I thought that it was going to be, you know, Judgment Day happens in the first ten minutes, and the rest of the movie is, you know, we see Judgment Day, or something like that. I think it was really good to build up to it and kind of leave it on, you know, and with that creepy song running over the end credits, you know, which, and it doesn't even rhyme if you stop, I'm going into way too much analysis. It, you know, that whole thing just gradually getting to Judgment Day and, you know, things kind of getting worse and worse. I gotta talk about the C-sectioned infant there with the dead mom and pop. That was nasty. That was really... <laughs> that pushed some buttons. That was really, really nasty. You know, I... I think they were just going for the most gruesome imagery they could, I mean, it was bad already when, you know, they arranged so that the man and wife were lying there together, but then the infant comes in. You know, at that point, you're not entirely sure if the baby's just dead in her stomach or what exactly, but oh, don't worry, they cut up her stomach, pulled out this bloody little infant, and they arrange it on top. That is just, yeah. Keep, you know, reaching for that ultimate kind of just WTF grossest thing ever put to film. You know, I, th I think you, you know, you came pretty close with that one. At first I thought it was slightly confusing with the 
jump in chronology. Isn't it maybe 10 or 20 minutes? I didn't count, I was too into the film. Where we're seeing something that technically, that already happened in with what we've already seen. You know, at first we don't know, you know, you might sort of connect the dots that the, you know, Betty, as we later realize she's, or whatever, we realize she's called Betty at some point in the movie. You know, her pager, that was actually, you know, the message, you know, do your duty. You maybe kind of connect that to her stabbing Will, Mike. Don't know where Will came from. Mike. But you don't know exactly what's going on. And then you see, you know, more of these, you know, fanatics when it kind of... Yeah, I guess the hint, the real hint that this is what we've, what has already happened is that the train pulls in and it's not entirely, you know, they don't bring that much attention to it. But if you're paying attention, you, you can tell that's Mike and that's Karen and they're still at the station. That must mean that this, this is their train, but it's slightly before they got on because it did stop very soon after they got on. You know, and then we hear the full message that he's actually saying, you know, over the intercom thing in the train. And we see, you know, Patrick stopping it. Patrick was a really great psycho. That was... I'll get into that a little bit. You know, and it, it goes on and you see, you know, you're introduced to a few more characters and then... Eventually, and you realize that, you know, Betty seeing a man and a woman on the tracks, that was, of course, the couple whose name I no longer remember. That was also kind of interesting. Was she really possessed? You know, was the, you know, suddenly she goes all wild, or is, you know, if you're going with a supernatural interpretation of the film, and most of us are going to, because... There's not that much evidence of there being absolutely nothing supernatural, at least by the end. You know, I, I'm i going to stick with, you know, only 20% chance of it not being Judgment Day and there being nothing supernatural to the film. I would love to hear other theories, though, if, if you can really argue for why there wasn't something supernatural or not a lot, anyway. But yeah, you know, she gets kind of possessed and she breaks the thing, you know, her vow. But yeah, you know, and suddenly you're seeing, you know, Karen and Mike with the rest of the group and, you know, okay, so now we're seeing what happens after that, you know. It, for a few minutes, my girlfriend and I weren't entirely sure if it had, you know, jumped back. But overall, it was a good thing to do because we really did kind of need, you know, both that immediate scare and then kind of building back up to, you know, explaining what is going on. Because when we just see Betty, you know, that in itself is not quite going to do it. You know, we need to see more. We need to see that there is a considerable group of these fanatics, you know. It needs to be a genuine threat. It can't just be two or three people. So the... The girl who is actually one of the Hope cult members, you know. Just gonna call her Hope from now on, because I have no clue what her name was. I completely forgot that. I like that she was kind of... She didn't want to go along with what the cult wanted, but when, you know, still when threatened, she did... You know... She, you know, she does untie Patrick and all that. You know, that was a real good kind of, you know, she she was afraid, you know, and that's kind of, you know, so so she took comfort in what she knows, and what she knew was her faith. So, you know, whether it was right or wrong, that was where she got her comfort. And, you know, yeah, that can actually be kind of a dangerous thing if, you know, your faith can then make you do something like that, you know. I don't know what the... 
I'm not entirely sure who the Viv Vivian or Viv Vivian. Oh, what, what was that? The Japanese girl who jumped in front of the train. I, I don't know. I, I must have missed it because I, in the credits I see a Vivian character, and you know the those drawings she kept getting were from you know. So it must be some psychic character, and I'm thinking maybe it was the Japanese woman who jumped jumped in front of the train. You know. The visions of the, you know, people with closed mouths and eyes, you know, very creepy, but I'm not entirely sure what they're kind of supposed to, is that like the demons, you know, prior to us seeing their final form, or, you know, what exactly is that? I, I like that we see one of the demons in sort of final form in, you know, kind of early on or maybe towards the middle, you know, when the two train workers are, you know, on opposite sides of the door. That was also a really interesting situation. You know, suddenly you hear the pager go off and it's like, do you know something about this? Why is there a pager in your locker? You know, the, the kind of paranoia, can I trust you? I've known you for years, but can I trust you? You know, and it's you know, the wife. I did think it was slightly corny with the, you know, so he says, you know, I've been eating nothing but muffins and rye bread, you know, and then later, <sighs> Hope, something about muffins, how she's been eating muffins, you know, Patrick says those muffins are really addictive, you know, I don't know, I guess, I thought maybe they put something in the muffins to... You know, that's never actually confirmed or not. I, I guess it was just to tie those things together to say, you know, because we needed something. I mean, we knew that Patrick was a member of the cult and we knew that Hope was. I guess it was just to have them, you know, connect from that kind of, you know, common trait because they, they needed that. that. That was also a really good scene with, you know... Patrick trying to convince her and you know she actually does end up stabbing her boyfriend although not entirely out of her own free will I also really like that you know at the end of the film essentially everyone's dead you know there's not really any and that's kind of the way this film should go you know we shouldn't have someone survive and make it out at the end you know it should end with you know again only the 20 percent left of maybe it was just you know, maybe it wasn't real i do think that you know correct me if i'm wrong but wasn't mike yeah mike was alive i'm pretty sure mike was alive and he was kind of dragging towards where she was but nothing actually comes of that. We don't see him attacked by the demons, and he's just, you know, I don't know. It just seems like they could have let him die, or could have maybe killed him, or something. I don't know. I guess they were just building up to, you know, we were supposed to think that they were going to be rejoined, and, you know, there was going to be... I mean, literally, when my girlfriend saw him at the train station, you know, she said, oh, love interest, you know, and... Yeah, that was kind of, you know, you just knew that guy had to be the one to, you know, yeah, obviously. But then they build up to, they're going to, you know, get back together, and then they don't, you know, and she's apparently attacked by the demons with the Terminator eyes and everything. And, you know, that doesn't, you know, that, that was pretty good. But yeah, the the Japanese girl who jumps in front of a train, was she a believer? I, you know, I maybe, th my girlfriend and I noticed that most of the people who saw, in fact, I think, except for Karen, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, everyone who saw someone with a messed up face or something, you know, again, maybe except for the Japanese girl, but we don't know about her, was a member of the cult, you know, believed in that, you know, Hope sees it, and one of the train workers, excuse me, the train worker, who, not a believer, but a cult member, sees, you know, a demon, 
you know, so maybe it is that they see it, and maybe it is some sort of mass psychosis, you know. Am I the only one who thought that their prophet, you know, the priest, either looked like kind of Glenn Beck meets Rush Limbaugh, or maybe, according to Jim's Andy, in 30 years. Who am I kidding? He's never going to live that long. I guess it was supposed to be blood on the television screen, you know, before, you know, the prophet came on and told people. I really liked the drawings and the drawings kind of changing as you, you know, that worked really well and but yeah, the, the, you know, Karen keeps seeing the Japanese girl who killed herself and that's kind of, you know, why though, you know, she's never at the very least, why her? You know, if they are just seeing things because, like, you know, the devil is breaking back into our world, or he's, you know, waging war against, you know, God. I don't know, why only her? She appears to be the only one who really sees something that is, never, again, apart from some of the, you know, cultists. So... Yeah, I'm not entirely sure why that... I suppose that pretty much covers everything. I like that the film kept changing locations without it being like, you know, oh, suddenly we're over here. It was very, you know, you followed them on their just desperate struggle to stay alive, to keep them away, and, you know, when the children appear, and, you know, Hope's boyfriend is actually forced to kill a child, you know, that was really terrifying, and, you know, I like that we see some of the believers not being, you know, some of the cultists not quite, you know, having, having doubts, you know, not wanting to, yeah, anyway, the, the you know, when the train broke down, for a while, I worried that the rest of the film would be set on a train or something, you know, that it was gonna go for that kind of thing. I don't think that would have worked at all. But then they leave the train, and they find this little room, and then again, for a little while, I was thinking, ah, oh, they're gonna stay in there for a while. And then again, they get moving, you know, it never really stayed in one place for too long, or you know, screech to a halt. I, I That was really good, you know. It doesn't spend too long in the train, because everything that happens in the train is setting up. You know, we're introduced to some characters. We realize, you know, Patrick. I almost forgot about Patrick. <sighs> you know, he's partially an example of the fact that you believe, or even that you're fanatic about something, does not mean that you're not going to do horrible things, even horrible things that are against the kind of faith, you know, it is, you know, he's, yeah, near the end, you know, he talks about, why am I not seeing, the, and then he cuts his stomach, I didn't quite get what the point of that was, nor why he cuts her shoulder, but I really did like her biting his lip off, and, you know, killing him. That was really good. But, yeah, you know, rapists, or, you know, attemptive rapists, but still, and just scumbag, you know, he's just so disgusting and deplorable, and it just, it really worked, you know, he was, you know, you love to hate him. And, you know, how he kind of almost gets away with some of these things on account of, I, you know, I would say his stat status, you know, although Betty does outrank him still, you know. It was kind of weird when, 
he was referred to as one of the lieutenants or something of the priest. I think they should have gone with a word that actually, you know, meant something within the kind of religious, I don't know, it just, it seems a little too military where it should be more, you know, like, something like, be careful, he's an ordained priest in this religion, something like that, you know, so we get, obviously it's important that he has the status, but yeah, different terms, all I'm saying. I, I would say that's why he is allowed to, you know, because quite clearly he's not that strong a believer, you know. I think the bit with the train worker was a test. I'm not saying they wouldn't still have killed him if he had killed his wife, but I do think that it was, you know, a genuine, you know, they wanted him to kill her. She was going to be killed anyway, you know, not sure why, but yeah, you know, not everything in this movie makes sense, and I don't think it's supposed to either. It's just supposed to mess with you. And it does. There were a couple of lines that I thought were just, I don't know, kind of off. I, when they're about to leave the that little room where they have Patrick as hostage. I was also unclear on how much, you know, for a while it looked like he had, for the first little while it looked like Mike had duct taped every inch of his body, you know, you just see the top and he's been, so, you know, we were thinking, oh, yeah, okay, dude, you can stop it now, that's, that's enough. But then later it looks like it's only really the shoulders Maybe also the arms, some... I would definitely go for the arms and the legs, you know, for the... But anyway, they're in that room, and they're about to get out, and then... I don't know, Neil, maybe, you know. Guy who manages to get his shirt off, you know, the... The buff dude with the axe. He's talking about, you know, we're gonna leave now, so if anybody needs to use the bathroom, Now's the time. You know, that in itself, okay, sh yeah, yeah, okay, if you want to make a point to say it. Then he goes on to say, because I, I need to take a major dump. Okay. Yeah, okay, sure. Feel free to announce that. That just seemed a little... Yeah, there, there were a couple of other lines in the movie that just, I don't know, felt a little weird or out of place, but yeah. I think that's everything, so yeah. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.